guys welcome back to our channel accounts guru cool learn accounting online so today we are here with one more video and in this video we are going to discuss about one of the most tricky accounting interview questions with answers that's we are going to discuss in this video so request viewers to watch the video till the end like the video share the video and subscribe our channel to get the more practical knowledge related to accounting and finance in addition to that for any kind of training if you want to connect with us or in addition to training if you need any consultancy related to accounting and finance so you can reach us on our email id that's accounts.gurukul@yahoo.com if you want to go for any software training that's related to sap tally oracle quickbooks soho so you can reach us on our email id that's accounts.gurukul@yahoo.com so here we are the first the first question itself is you are able to know that how the tricky questions are there and what is mean by that so the first question is related to this if i had only one statement and wanted to review the overall health of a company which statement would i use and why so this is the most most tricky questions to know the answer for this and uh, which is the one statement from which you are able to review overall health of the entity and why the answer for this question is that cash is king the cash flow statement gives a true picture of how much cash the company is generating that being said it's important to note that all three statement truly are required to get a full picture of the health of a company learn more about how the three financial statements are linked so the answer for the first question is that if we have the cash flow statement and the cash flow statement is going to be prepared based on the profit and loss account and balance it so from that we are able to do the overview or review of the overall health of that entity and uh, the reason because that cash flow has prepared based on the profit and loss account and balance sheet the next what happens on the income statement if inventory goes up by dollar 10 now if your inventory is increase the valuation of your inventory is increase then what's going to be happen with your income statement so the answer for this question is that nothing how this is a trick question the only impact will be on the balance sheet and cash flow statement so there is no any impact is going to be there on income statement the impact is towards the balance sheet and cash flow statement what is working capital working capital is typically defined as a current assets less current liabilities in banking working capital is normally defined more narrowly as current assets excluding cash less current liabilities excluding interest bearing debt so that's the calculation of the working capital if cash collected from customers is not it recorded as revenue what happens to it if we have collected certain cash from the customers against that we haven't recorded as a revenue then what's going to be happen for it the answer for this question is that it usually goes into deferred revenue on the balance sheet as a liability if the revenue has not been earned it so if we have collected any cash from the customers 
and we haven't recorded as a revenue yet and uh, we haven't delivered any revenue to the customer then that's going to be parked under deferred revenue on the balance sheet as a liability if the revenue has not been earned yet. What's the difference between deferred revenue and accounts receivable? The deferred revenue represents cash received from customers for services or goods not yet provided. Account receivable represents cash owing from customers for goods services already provided. So the meaning for the deferred revenue is that we have received the cash from the customers for which we haven't yet delivered the, our services or goods. And account receivable state that we delivered the services and we haven't received cash from the customer. When do you capitalize rather than expense a purchase? If the purchase will be used in the business for more than one year, it is capitalized and depreciated. So if you are doing any expenses, that's going to be used more than a year, it is capitalized and we have to do the depreciations on that. Under what circumstances does goodwill increase? When a company buys another business, for more than the fair value of its tangible and intangible assets, goodwill is created. Walk me through the three financial statements. The balance sheet shows a company's assets, its liabilities and shareholders' equity. The income statement outlines the company's revenues and expenses. The cash flow statement shows the cash flows from operating, investing and financing activities. These are all the three statements and you can walk through with this like the answers what we have provided here. What does having negative working capital mean? Negative working capital is a common in some industries such as grocery retail, and the restaurant business. For a grocery store, customers pay upfront inventory moves relatively quickly, but suppliers often give 30 days or more credit. This means that the company receives cash from customers before it needs the cash to pay suppliers. Negative working capital is a sign of efficiency in businesses with low inventory and accounts receivable. In other industries, negative working capital may signal a company is facing financial trouble. How do you record PPE and why is this important? There are essentially four areas to consider when accounting for PP and E on the balance sheet, initial purchase, depreciation, additions, capital expenditures, and dispositions. In addition to these four, you may also have to consider revaluation. For many businesses, PP and E is the main capital asset and generates revenue, profitability, and cash flow. So that's related to how do you record PPE and why is this important? How does an inventory write down affect the three statement? On the balance sheet, the asset account of inventory is reduced by the amount of the write down and so its shareholders equity. The income statement is hit with an expense in either Cox or a separate line item for the amount of the right town reducing net income. On the cash flow statement, the right town is added back to CFO as it's a non cash expense, but must not be double counted in the changes of non cash working capital. 
one or three examples of common budgeting methods. The examples of common budgeting methods include zero based budgeting, incremental budgeting, and value based budgeting. Learn more about the various types in CFI's budgeting and forecasting process. Please explain the revenue recognition and matching principles. The revenue recognition principle dictates the process and timing by which revenue is recorded and recognized as an item in the financial statements based on the certain criteria. Example, transfer of ownership. The matching principle dictates that the timing of expenses be matched to the period in which they are incurred as opposed to when they are actually paid. So that's the answer for explain the revenue recognitions and matching principle. If you were CFO of our company, what would keep you up at night? Step back and give a high level overview of the company's current financial position or companies in that industry in general. Highlight something on each of the three statements, income statement, growth, margin, profitability, balance it, liquidity, capital assets, credit metrics, liquidity ratios, cash flow statement, short term and long term cash flow profile and need to raise money or return capital to shareholders. So that you have to give the explanation for if you were CFO of a company, what would keep you up at night? So that's all the tricky questions, interview questions related to accounting, interview questions with answers. And thanks guys for watching the video till the end and request viewers to like the video, share the video and subscribe our channel to get the more practical knowledge related to accounting and finance. Thank you.